So I'm uh, Taylor Carpenter with Volk Co-op again, and um, I'm going to be talking about how we uh, are working to create reproducible performance tests for the cloud native network functions, and specifically in the CNCF's uh, CNF project. <clears throat> so a little bit of, I'm going to talk about who uh, has been involved, what the project's about, um, how we created a neutral environment to, for these tests. The test comparisons itself, we'll take a look at some of those, how you can verify them externally, and what's next for the project. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end. So we've been focused on trying to get a lot of collaboration uh, from different groups. And uh, we've been able to work with some folks from Kubernetes, Network Service Mesh, um, people in the FDIO from different projects, VPP, CSIT Labs, and that's been great. Um, <clears throat> so why are we here? We had a little bit of intro on that. Um, we're expecting to have more benefits for providers and folks that are using network functions like cost savings, including the initial capital expense as you're building out the infrastructure, as well as the operating um, expenses. Um, improved resiliency in the infrastructure, on recovery whenever things fail, higher development cycle, both in the infrastructure as well as the network functions themselves. So this project, we're trying to facilitate collaboration with all of the different groups, try to bring vendors and providers to work together, creating reference code, um, hopefully focusing on real-world use cases, so we want feedback on what those are and what people are interested in, and make those available and easily re reproducible. Ideally, someone can take the code, and if you're working with a open provider like, say, Packet Cloud, you could have an API key, run a few CLI commands, and recreate the entire test bed, and then get the results that we're seeing. <clears throat> So we start by focusing on a neutral test environment. And by that, we're saying all of the infrastructure hardware, the software, and all the way through the community. For the infrastructure and hardware side, we're looking at places like Packet, which has bare metal. Um, AWS would be another one with bare metal. Um, open labs like the CSIT uh, lab at FDIO. And then commodity hardware. So this is for reference that you could build from. And then on the software side, everything that we're doing and focused on is 100% open source. And then trying to look at standards for the platforms on deployment, provisioning, um, using vanilla versions of the software. Someone else could optimize, but this would be the base. So for OpenStack, Kubernetes, whatever that is. And then on the testing, we're looking at trying to have test cases that are as close as possible to apples to apples, as well as um, optimized versions for the platform. And then looking at the differences between those. For the community, again, cross-group collaboration. So CNCF's been involved, uh, Network Service Mesh from the Kubernetes side, people from FDIO. We've had involvement from Intel, Cisco, uh, Packet, Mellanox, on the network cards, and we have uh, governance in progress. We want open decision making that's highly visible, inspired by the CNCF charter. <clears throat> Once we have that neutral environment, we can focus on reproducible test comparisons. And we want as much as possible to be programmatic in the provisioning from the infrastructure up. So going to pack it, as, as one of the examples, these are, we're looking at M2 extra larges, that's the type there. These are based on Dell um, R640s. They have dual Xeon Golds. And by default, they have the dual port Mellanox NICs that we can use for testing. So we're talking about data plane, high performance, what do we have there? And then we've also tested um, with some quad port Intels. These are all on packet on 10 gig ports connected to their switch. So once we know that, we can see how do we provision the resources. For us, we're using Terraform. We can use that to target different providers. 
to create the resources, and then we look at the wiring. How are the systems connected on the network? For the quad port Intel, um, it could look a little like this, and we're going to create all that layer two configuration, including talking to the packet switch. So if there's an API, which they have, we can configure all that, set the VLANs, and then provision the host themselves, creating the bridge domains and all the connections to the ports, <clears throat> at which point we can focus on the platform. So for OpenStack, we're using OpenStack's Chef Cookbook to provision most of the cluster. It's all bare metal for what we're looking at. And then VPP is used for all of the networking, both on the vSwitch as well as for the VNFs themselves when we're looking at data plane VNFs. KVM would be another one for VNFs. Very similar. It's bare metal. We're using Ansible for the provisioning. And then VPP again for all the networking. Kubernetes, um, same thing. We're using Cloud in it, which kicks off a bunch of Ansible. It's bare metal for all the services. So trying to get as close as possible for these. After that, we can focus on the, both the service topology that we want to test for these network functions and the density on the machines. So for an OpenStack node, you could have, um, from a high level, you have a vSwitch and then some number of VNFs, similarly for Kubernetes where you may have one or more pods that separate those. <clears throat> the next thing is you need to know what type of network functions. What we're looking at in these tests that I'm going to show are um, a simplified set where we're looking at an IPv4 router that's forwarding packets over multiple interfaces. And we take that and you create service function chains. And this is going to be the same whether it's VNF or CNFs. These are sets of services that you link together to create some functionality that you want. And then we can look at density. So you could have three chains with one network function each. So these may be for multiple tenants or to spread the load, whatever reason. We're also looking at three chains with two network functions and two chains with three network functions. These latter two are using all the cores on the packet machine that we're using on a single socket. Then we can do the test case. So we're trying to get to this point, building. All of it's reproducible up to this point. Our first test case that we're going to look at here is a, using a snake topology and multiple chains. So what is this? This is where the traffic is going from the vSwitch through the chain going into each network function, back to the vSwitch and looping through. And this is the same topology for both VNFs and CNFs, whether you're on OpenStack, KVM, Kubernetes, or Docker Direct, and whether you have multiple service chains or a single. If you take it all, go ahead. I'm going to use the prerogative to ask a question. Um, so for the, for the OpenStack use cases, how are you setting up and creating the service chains? Are you using something like service function chaining in an SDN controller? Or how, how are you getting the service chains uh, configured um, in the system? OK. So for OpenStack, um, we, so trying to keep the base as close as possible between all the platforms, um, we are trying to first use whatever standard, so that's OpenSec for the cluster. And then Ansible sets up a lot of the layer two. Once we're ready to actually launch the service chains, um, we're trying to use heat for OpenSec to de deploy. As far as deciding what those look like, the flow is whether we, we started with uh, Bash, because that was where a lot of the CSIT stuff and KVM, and part of it's Ansible. You could use many different things for the flow. And the same question for Kubernetes. Are you using anything like network service mesh to set up the chaining, or is it just things that you can do in, in Kubernetes natively? So for Kubernetes, um, we're working closely with network service mesh. Um, Ed's back there. Fred may be in here. Um, and 
we're merging for the tests that we're looking at right now. We're not using NSM, but that is like a goal very soon after. <laughs> and right now, we are using Helm charts to deploy the CNFs. Um, the layer two setup is happening outside of Kubernetes right now until uh, network service mesh is ready. The, the layer two setup is being done very similar between OpenStack and Kubernetes. We have Ansible that runs some stuff to build out the, v, the vSwitch, VPP vSwitch. On OpenStack, we're actually using VPP Neutron, which is an, an OpenStack and VPP project to set that up. So once you have the service chains that you want um, to set up, then it looks a little like this for the running the test, a traffic generator, which is running NFV bench and then T-Rex to um, drive the packets. It's gonna go through the switch, so it packet the provider. It'll go through there, hit the worker node or the compute node, whatever's uh, running those network functions, go through all the chain and it loops back to the traffic generator, and then we can look at some of the results. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of, this is actually KVM running the VNFs and Kubernetes, which is running the CNFs. So what we're showing here is throughput in millions of packets per second. For a two-chain with three network function each on VNFs, we had about half a million packets per second for the throughput. And then the same test on Kubernetes with CNS, we had nearly eight times performance improvement with 4.3 million packets per second. And this is all looping through the vSwitch on both of those. And the best case for the VNS was around 4.75 million packets per second with three chains and one network function. So it's not looping back through in that test. It goes from the vSwitch to the network function and then back out the node. <clears throat> we still had nearly a 2x increase for the CNS for that. Yes? So I What are we trying to validate here? Like VPP itself's performance, the platform performance, these CNFs and VNFs are very nebulous, and if you're keeping everything untuned to make it as generic as possible, obviously certain virtual workloads wouldn't work as optimally. So like, what are these numbers telling me, like, as far as a performance goes? So both, um, both for the VNF and CNF, we're using VPP. So on the KVM side in this instance, as well as OpenSAC, it's VPP for the vSwitch. The network function itself is also running VPP. So we're trying to have those, it's the same code running in both. We're also trying to make sure that the host networking is optimized, anything in the BIOS or whatever else you want. We're isolating the NUMA zone, we're using one socket. So we're trying to get it down as close as possible. What we're looking here, here is how the networking for this particular, the networking compared on um, f connecting into the containers from the vSwitch versus connecting from the vSwitch into VMs. That would be part of it for the snake case. Um, we have a, it's Neutron is a network in OpenStack. We're not using that for this. So this was a direct connect from vSwitch. But, we're looking at the, for the IPv4 routing, it's 64 byte packets and looking at the high, the high how do we get the highest throughput in uh, millions of packets per second? When you say the highest throughput, though, right? like what, what are you validating to say, if I was to take this data mm -hmm. and apply it to my provider use case, um, like how does this correlate to say, like, yes, I can use these tests to tune my infrastructure and prove it out, but if it's just a bunch of so this would be more like, I would say, edge of network where, where you're routing the traffic somewhere. If we started, some, you want as high a throughput as possible before you get to some other network functions. For this particular one, this is an IPv4 router. You may say, now that's going to connect to something else. So a use case where you said, we know we need these six 
um, network functions, you could say what is the throughput at each, and then what is the throughput for the whole chain. Um, I think Machek, who's also collaborating with us from CSIP, may have a comment. Yeah, maybe can we uh, or, or, uh, delay this question to, to my piece? I'll cover that. So Machek is going to be following up. He's been working with uh, Peter, and we're, they have a lot more detailed content. I'm, I'm kind of given the high level and the reproducibility, and then we'll dive into maybe some of these. You have a, someone back there. Also, just to point out, we are getting close to time. Okay. Um, so yeah. we can ask one question, and then let's yeah, kind of go through. Or can you hold the question? Let me, let me get yeah, through we'll come on. OK, so here's another test case that we were doing. This is um, an optimal connection. So what is the service topology um, that would be optimal to connect the network's functions? So for VNFs, that's that snake case. This is what loops through the vSwitch. With CNFs, whether that's Kubernetes or direct on Docker, you can directly connect the CNFs. You, you don't have to loop back through the vSwitch. You have a direct connection um, between each. And that's the same for single, multiple, um, when we run this traffic. So what we're looking at here is a comparison when, on the, on the left-hand side, we're showing that snake case so at half a million packets per second for the VNFs with two chains and a three network function for the depth. And on the pipeline side, that's the CNF pipeline, direct connect, we have nine million packets per second, so over 17x increase. And this is across the board, when you're able to do pipelines, connections, the CNFs show a much higher throughput. Um, so best case for these particular tests that we're looking at, 4.75 million packets per second for the VNFs, and you're showing an increase on the CNFs um, for both the snake and the pipeline case. So even the single network function on the VNF is lower throughput than a multiple connections for the CNFs. Um, so verifying the results, if you're wanting to actually take this, it's all up on the repo, 100% open source. You could take a, if you have a packet account for these particular tests, you can, if you have an API key, download the code, uh, follow the docs that we have on the repo, and you should be able to recreate the test bed and run, we have many different test cases that you can run and verify. Um, so we talked about adding network service mesh earlier. We're planning on adding that for the Kubernetes use case. We would like to have more collaboration. So if you have use cases that would be an optimal setup for VNFs or something that you want to create for CNFs, we'd love to have feedback on that. We want to support more environments. Um, I, should, I was showing you Packet. We also support FDIS CSIT Lab, and we're going to keep adding more. Some more presentations, including Machek coming up next. <coughs> and collaborate with us. There's a, cloud, a CNCF Slack channel, uh, CNF, GitHub, and I think that's it. Do we have any time for more Q&A? Uh, I, I think you had asked one question, so we'll go here and then go straight into Machek's presentation. Okay. Hi. My question mainly about the standardization. So if you look at the VNF world, it's a lot of standardization, like it's in the V3 GPP, Trying to define how the service is, service graph is created, and also around security, has has any of this been taken into account when you compare the the, the two models, CNF versus VNFs? I wasn't quite clear on what what part were we trying to take into account. So issues like uh, security or the oh, way the, the service. aspects. Okay, um, this particular set of tests that I was showing, we're not looking at anything security-wise. We do have some use cases that we have worked on in the past and we'd like to that would deal with intrusion detection, network functions, firewalls, other things. For the Kubernetes side or specific things on deployments, that would be something else to think of. But these tests aren't showing anything about the security aspects, whether it affects performance or the deployments. 